I'm going to begin my story. If you come on down to Cambridge, just a little up from Harvard Square and Great Common uh, in Cambridge, and that's where their story on the path would have begun. And if you go there, there are three things that are connected with that space and that place that had significance in our nation's history and our heritage. Now, first, we have, of course, Harvard was founded by those Puritans who came in 1636. It was founded became Harvard College in 1638 for the preparation of ministers. And they would argue that Harvard, that Harvard is the great grandfather of our higher education and our intellectual history in America. The second that you'll find there is this place in time in our American history when George Washington assumed command of the Continental Army. And he began the long journey of transforming separate militias into a colonial American army. And the long journey that they did, they followed to independence. Third, way off in the corner, there's a monument that says, you know, this is the way to Charlestown, and oh, by the way, from here, uh, the group left to Connecticut. So there was a description by Governor Winthrop of they began this journey on May 31st. He noted in his journal. Uh, they traveled two months. This would have been the wilderness, two weeks through the wilderness. And they followed Indian trails across the Indian lands. And they arrived at the Connecticut River, uh, opposite where, uh, as a gathering along the shores of the Connecticut River. And we can go there today, and that's what you'd see in the spot they were living across. And as we go across the river, you can walk across the river on the Founders Bridge right to the center of our river, where they have the old state house. But the old state house was preceded by the meeting house that was established by the founders of Hartford. But on their arrival, the people of the three towns united together as a congregation to create a new order. And it's memorialized in, the, in front of the old state house because in the meeting house, there was a special gathering in 1638 presided over by Thomas Hooker. So we'll take a walk into the meeting house and imagine yourself as one of the congregation who come from Hartford and come from Wethersfield and Windsor, the three towns. And if you couldn't find a bench or a place to sit inside, you sat outside because the windows would be open and Hooker's voice would carry because he was used to speaking to crowds. And there on the podium will bring Thomas Hooker to share what his sermon was. And we have a record of his sermon from May 1638 uh, from Henry Walcott, who wrote it down. Uh, and Thomas Hooker preached to members of the congregations from those three towns in 1638 his sermon about choose wise leaders. I have to think, and after our elections this week, I wonder uh, how that message might go over today. Mm -hmm. But in forming a government, Hooker spoke to the congregations and laid down some guidance for them as they were considering forming a new order. That it's the people who must rule. And he brought down the fact that God was giving them, as individual people, the gift of creating and forming government. And that the franchise is a trust, the vote is a trust and that you must choose wisely those who will have the concern for the good of the entire congregation, not be swayed by factions, but be considering the good of the whole. And that leaders have an obligation to uphold this serving for the good of the whole congregation, and if they fail in that duty, they can be removed. Again, on the stage of Citizens United, and uh, we just lived through an election cycle. I really wonder how that would go over today. And as a result, the towns of Windsor, Wethersfield, and Hartford, the three men of the towns, in 1639 adopted the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut, which really was a new order. The preamble is really Thomas Hooker's connection of divine purpose in God's transferring the authority to create a government to the people directly. And the orders, we believe, really came from Roger Ludlow, who was a lawyer from Windsor, enumerated the rights and protections of individuals against the authority of the government, and set limits on the powers of government and the people who were elected to positions of authority. And it was ratified by the people. And one of the key things that I learned here is that all the other colonies at that time had charters. And the charters spoke of 
Our government is established by the gift of the king's authority. And here there was no mention of the king's authority. The people gave authority to the government. So we have something happening to bring us around the circle here. We have King James and Charles who formulated and enforced the divine right of kings being overturned in Connecticut by these people who commit down and establish a new order based on the divine right of people. And that really, I think, set in motion. Uh, we talk about Lexington Concord being the start of the American Revolution. I think it began back here with the folks who came down this path and established Connecticut. Because they set themselves apart from the authority of the king. And the fundamental orders were the godfather of our elect declaration of independence in our constitution. And this has been recognized here in Connecticut. Uh, why do you have those license plates that say what they do? Uh, the fundamental orders established by these people who came through the wilderness became the foundation of law in Connecticut. And really is the reason why this is regarded as the constitution state. For more information, visit the Old Connecticut Path website. Follow the Old Connecticut Path on Facebook.